Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's uh, the Ask the Sensei Q&A for February 2022. Ooh, cool. So many new faces, old faces, good faces. Um, super, super excited to have you. Um, I'm Tish Hicks. I'm the Master Sensei of the VO Dojo here in Burbank, California. Um, and we are joined today by uh, Sensei Kat from the dojo and our techno sensei Dan Leonard, um, who is the home studio master. Um, we've got Jeffrey Gilbank, who is our talent, dojo talent support on drums. So if you need anything uh, here, and we're really excited to welcome Philip Gilpin from the Catalyst Story Institute. Um, today's kind of a special day. We'll, we'll have him introduce himself and, and uh, share a little bit more about what's going on with Catalyst. Um, today's is a little special day on, um, on Ask the Sensei, because usually we're just like, hey, here's us. What's your questions? Um, and today we're sort of uh, using this as an opportunity to share and announce um, a partnership that we are that we are creating with with Catalyst, where the dojo is going to be in partnership with this amazing collaborative creative um, resource. So we're we're announcing that, and um, uh, want to introduce everybody, uh, Dan and Cat and Philip, and then. Also just, and then I'll ask, I'm gonna ask one overarching question because it's a little bit different how we're doing. So I'll ask it now. The question as everyone's introducing that you can think about is how can we as voiceover artists think outside of the box and start thinking about how can we create content that is create our own opportunities. And for those of you who are coming from the catalyst side of this event, how can voiceover and voiceover artists um, serve you in your creation and or how can being a voiceover artist serve you in your um, in, in creating all that you create. So um, so let that brew and then we'll also answer um, we'll also answer any other voiceover questions that have been on your mind. This is this is the, um, the weekly weekly, monthly place to get answers, get questions answered of anything where you might be getting stuck or you just want to get some other opinions and information. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll introduce everybody. And then if you have questions already, put them in the chat. And uh, when it's question time, uh, Jeffrey will uh, call on you from the chat and we'll have you come up and share on the board. We'll go for a tight one hour. And uh, if you have extra time afterwards um, and wanna hang out and discuss what we talked about or have other questions, we usually do about 15 minutes of breakout rooms after so we can we can chat after the tight hour. So that, that what a great group that's assembled. Um, Dan, you wanna introduce yourself? I certainly, uh, I'm Dan Leonard, the, the home studio master. You can find me over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Nobody seems to understand what their home voiceover studio is supposed to be like, what it's supposed to sound like. Well, I won't say nobody, but uh, there's a high degree of misinformation out there. My job is to make sure you get it right, get it simple, and do your job as a voice actor, not as a recording engineer. Excellent. Any and questions then, you have on that, so I'm here. Yeah. For you. And then, you know, any tech questions in terms of being a creator? Um, that, that Dan can be a resource for too, because we all have to be producing our own stuff in our own houses these days. Um, yeah, Kat, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, yeah, Dojo Sensei Kat. Um, I'm a working talent myself, and I left LA for Minneapolis three years ago to continue my voice acting career. I don't do a lot of on-camera there because there isn't as big of a market, but right after I moved home, Philip arrived to my home state and announced this amazing festival now happening just two hours north of my home. I'm currently in Rome, Georgia for the winter because I could, <laughs> but I'll be back in Minnesota in a month or two, and my involvement, so I coach at the Dojo 
dojo, <clears throat> excuse me, at the dojo. And my involvement with Catalyst is when I met Philip, I said, well, do you have table reads there so that all of your amazing writers and content creators can hear their scripts performed by working pros? And he said, no, we don't. The job is yours. So uh, now this is going on my third year producing the table reads for Catalyst. And now I'm helping out to um, sort of launch this additional division of animation, gaming, podcasting, voiceover to the Catalyst world. Yay, excellent. And Philip, the, the piece de resistance. Um, hi, welcome, welcome, welcome. Introduce, in, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what Catalyst is. Sure, uh, thanks so much for having me and, and, and Kat and Tish and, uh, and Jeffrey and Dan and the team over at the dojo for, for putting this together. This is super exciting. I always love seeing new uh, creators and, and meeting new storytellers. So I'm already uh, just in awe of, of the group we've got. Uh, my name is Philip Gilpin Jr. I'm originally from the Boston, Massachusetts area. Uh, after college, moved out to LA, worked at HBO as a business affairs analyst out there. Uh, was lucky enough to be there during the golden years when we were doing Sopranos and Six Feet Under and Sex and the City and Curb and Wire and all the great stuff in the early 2000s. Um, learned the business uh, a little bit from both sides. I was a writer and an actor in the theater and uh, by night and then by day a business affairs analyst at the studio uh, and I ended up getting involved with uh, what the time was called ITV Fest, the independent television festival in Los Angeles in 2006. Uh, ITV Fest was started by AJ and Jenny Tesler who are TV and film producers and its origin story is really simple and it still connects to why we're here today which is in 2006, there were absolutely zero places that an independent episodic or television, whatever you wanna call it, creator could take an episodic project. There are plenty of film festivals. Uh, one of my mentors is Serena Catania who started the early versions of what became Sundance. Uh, the film world has had opportunities for decades, but if you flash back to 2006, there were zero opportunities for episodic content. The other two things that happened that summer in 2006 serendipitously, one, Panasonic released their first prosumer digital camera, the DVX100, and it finally made it feasible for people to not have to buy film stock, uh, and they were the advent of digital technology started. The other thing that happened that summer, which you know we can all debate whether or not it's had any impact on the industry, was a launch of a little website called youtube.com. And it all of a sudden, you had these two things happening simultaneously where we could all now make stuff and we could distribute it and we didn't have to go through an agency or a network to do it. Uh, I remember going to the first panel at ITV Fest and network execs were basically laughing at the notion that a website with CAD videos would ever be a threat to their business model. Uh, and 16 years later, here we are. Uh, <laughs> so that's the introduction to, to me, how I got in this, uh, what the organization is, and we'll, uh, we'll pick up the rest of the story and fill in as we, as we go. Yeah, um, Philip and I also had a, an opportunity to speak earlier this week. We do something before Ask the Sensei called Dojo 21 Questions, which um, as Philip said, oh, my friend created that for Vanity Fair, the 73 question. I'm like, of course. Yeah, um, yeah. But um, you might have you might have gotten to take that in um, earlier this week, but there's a little, it's sort of like a BTS or a little bit more um, backstory. Um, so we can have more questions of, of your questions. So absolutely. Yeah. 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 And um, we're really excited about this collaboration and um, hang out to the end and we're going to share some some goodies for to celebrate the celebrate uh, uh, some opportunities to celebrate the, the, the collaboration. So, um, awesome, this is great. Let's, um, let's see where we're at with questions. Jeffrey, um, what questions do you have? Oh, and look at everyone's from everywhere. This is great. Hey, yeah, if y'all have questions about voiceover or uh, anything would like to pick our collective brains, drop it in the chat and mm -hmm. We're going to start with Terry Briscoe, who's calling in from the DMV. I think that's the Department of Motor Vehicles. Um, so we appreciate the dedication. Uh, so Terry Briscoe, uh, I'm going to pin you and you can unmute yourself and ask your question. There Hello, everybody. <laughs> hey, my question is for Dan. How you doing, yeah. Dan? Um, 
I would like to know what the ideal uh, normalization settings are in your mind. In, in my mind or in the in the standard of in the industry? Like, well, well, both. Give me both. <laughs> Being the teacher I am, I would I would ask, what do you think they're supposed to be, and what have you heard? Oh, I have no idea. This is the one thing I'm not great at the technical stuff. That's why I'm that's why I'm here with you. Oh, OK. Well, it's not particularly technical, but uh, normalization is one of those things that uh, is, is highly misunderstood and highly overused. Uh, it's normalization is to make sure that your audio, once you record it, is to a certain level and generally the setting is to minus three dB. You really don't want it getting any hotter than that. Uh, so the standard is always setting it to minus three. The thing is, when do you use it? It depends on who you talk to. Uh, I know some producers that, you know, and, and, and editors that will say, well, once you record things, normalize it. The thing is, is normalization is not a major adjustment. It's not a big jump in volume. It's if you've recorded and your levels are too low, uh, that means that you need to raise your gain. Uh, you know, in either depending on what kind of a computer you have it, or if software you're using, make sure you're always, you know, your input is at 100% in the software and then adjust it from your digital interface, unless you have a, a USB microphone. But essentially, if you do have a USB microphone, then what? Well, okay. If what, what software are you using? I'm using, uh, these are Audacity and I clean it up in Isotope. Okay. All right. All right. See, now this brings up all sorts of questions. Why do I feel you have to use isotope? You know, I always talk about the basics of your home voiceover studio, acoustics, mic technique, proper level setting. If you get all those three things right, isotope is something that you would use to produce the next, you know, Linkin Park album, unless I'm totally dating myself. Um, Good album. <laughs> can I say? Uh, it should be minus three. Okay. And the thing is, is it anytime you use normalization, it should not be a, you know, a gain of more than half a dB. So if you record right in the first place and you normalize it, it shouldn't do anything. Okay. So, what, and what was your recommendation for the USB mic gain setting? Well, it, uh, on a USB mic, it should be, uh, you have to look at the VU meter. So we, we, we used to use this guy, but we don't use this guy anymore. <laughs> it's all... It's, it's all digital. And there's a meter at the top of Audacity. You know, there's the input meter and the output meter. The input meter, it should always, when you're recording, you know, when you're testing and setting your levels, always in the green, always in the yellow, with an occasional, you know, flashing up into the orange, but very rarely into the red. If it's down just in the green, it's not loud enough. Thank you. That's a much more easy way to do that. So you get it right, as opposed to well, how many dB where, you know, it's supposed to be average, you know, should be about minus nine to your, you know, your average peaks, your hottest peak should not be any louder than minus six to, to minus four. And you don't want to be getting any hotter than that. Digital audio a lot gives you a lot of headroom to work with. So the easy answer, minus three. Thank you. <laughs> da, 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 da. Excellent, excellent. I wonder, I want to ask a question just to everyone, since this is a little unusual um, to have this opportunity of Philip and we're kind of pushing, we're kind of pushing the, the pushing the envelope, pushing the outside the, some of, you know, I think, I think a lot of training for voiceover, running your voiceover business is figuring out like, okay, what are the lanes of the highway that we can run in? Where, where are we going? Where, what, what can we do? And then getting it streamlined into, great, I've got, this, I've got this revenue stream going and I go like this, this, this to do it. You know, that, like that might be your pay to play thing or your, your relationship with your agent. Um, so I just wanna get a sense of this, this question of, this question of, what if we could make things ourselves? What what comes like what comes up for you? Uh, is it some like raise a hand? Is this something you've thought of before? Thought of done, you know. <laughs> there, <laughs> right, right, right. Excellent. You know, and then maybe the next layer of questions are what has stopped you, or what would you like to do? Um, I just want to I just want to keep on opening up because it is a little 
it is a little like give uh, I'll give us all permission to go to those places that we might be like oh I would just like to I just want to be in animation I just want to be animation right well at some point Seth MacFarlane said that too right um it's worked out okay for him um it's it, you know it's at some point Matt and Trey said that too <laughs> it's worked out okay for them so um yeah I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep on shaking shaking it up to to get those questions out um I, I would be fascinated to know uh you know what what it is that that catalyst does for content creators and encouraging people to create more you know individualized content which is pretty important to voiceover people because that's one of the ways we get ourselves out there right now so i'd be fascinated to hear what he how they support uh you know short format uh type of work mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm looking through the questions that are coming in the chat. They're really great. Um, Justin's question about uh, picking, working with talent or somebody who's casting talent. Um, I don't know. How to, it's a Jimmy. Uh, the fact that you're you have a Nigerian American experience series. I don't know if you know this, but our Story Institute works directly with uh, the Nigerian U.S. Nigerian consulate in Lagos. Uh, to pick up and discover new Nigerian content creators. Um, that's a partnership we started via the State Department last year. Um, so that's, you know, copywriting, mentorships. Yeah, these are all really great questions. Um, here's the short answer is what we do at Catalyst that's different. And uh, if you go back to the, the little story I told about our history there, uh, we focus only on TV and episodic. And what that means is, anything that isn't a film. We haven't slapped a label and a definition on TV only means this many minutes per episode, this many episodes in length, or this type of story structure. We mean gaming, we mean animation, we mean AR, VR, traditional TV, reality, unscripted, comedy, drama, scripted, anything that you can think of that is storytelling in an episodic format, we, we are your kind of welcome and starting point, um, even stuff that we haven't thought of yet. Uh, and I say that because the answer to most of the questions I'm seeing in the chat is unfortunately very simple, which is the film side of the industry is all about making a product and showcasing that product to buyers, period. And the thing about a film is when you make a film, it's done. It's like going to the car dealership. You get the buyer gets to test drive your vehicle. They get to kick the tires. They get to watch your film and see whether or not they like what you made and whether or not they like the storyline and the plot and the characters. If they like it, great. They buy it. Move on. Episodic couldn't be more different. And the core answer to all of your questions I'm seeing so far is the episodic industry is based purely on relationships. There's just no way around it. Hmm. There just isn't. And the reason for that is when you go in to pitch a series, animated or not, you're asking somebody for their money, their time, and their resources on a project that you don't know the basic answers to. You don't know how long it's going to be. You don't know how much money you need. You don't know how many people you're going to cast. You have no idea where you're going to end up shooting it or not shooting it. Imagine walking into a bank and saying, hey, I want a loan to build a building. And they ask you how many stories high is it going to be? And you say, I don't know, <laughs> right? <laughs> like that's the chaos and craziness of the episodic side of the industry. And it's why it's purely rooted in trust and relationships. So that is what the Institute is meant to do is give you that, the answer to the question of how do I make those relationships? Mm -hmm. Not all of us are good at networking. I am terrible at it as well. Um, and I always had this problem in our industry over the last 20 years where sometimes networking feels weird or it feels, feels salesy or it feels, un, you know, ungenuine. Um, and that's why we created this Institute program was to solve that problem. And once you focus in on what you want to achieve, where you want to go, then you can, once you've made that decision as an artist, which to be honest, is typically the hardest part of the entire process we work with, with most creators that come into the Institute, is very simply you answering the question, what do you want? <laughs> and as soon as you've identified the answer to that question, we can then work with you and say, oh, great. 
you're looking to get casted on an animated show. Wonderful. Here are the 30 seminars you should watch to learn the basics about that first. Here are the four people that are going to be at one of our events around the year that you should meet. Here are potential mentors for you in that realm. And here's the people that you should meet at the festival. Um, the festival event is actually only one of our year round events. We're a year round story institute first, we're a festival event second. And that's really important because there's a certain anxiety that comes with festivals for creators, which is, oh my God, I have to shove my entire success or failure of my career into the next five days. And it's, that's insane, right? It's, oh my God, I, I went to Sundance and I didn't get my, my film bot and my idea and my pitch didn't get picked up. So everything now sucks and I'm moving on. Um, or I, I went to Catalyst in Duluth and I didn't get to meet Netflix. I didn't get my, my deal signed. So therefore it's over. TV doesn't work that way. TV is not an annualized process of you make a project and whether it sells or not. TV is a decade long process. There are shows in development right now at major networks and studios with people that have won Emmys and Oscars and they've been in there for 10 years. Same thing on the other end of the spectrum. There are smaller studios and relationships being built at Catalyst events among creators who have their own YouTube studios or who have their own animation ideas or who have their own small series ideas. And it's taking two, three, four years to develop just a series of episodes that are 20 minutes in length each and they release four of them a year or something as they build up an audience. So that is kind of my overview answer to all the questions that I'm seeing here. Um, the one in particular that's on my screen right now is from Justin Phillips. It says, um, at what stage of development? Let's, let's, have, let's have Justin speak as- Oh yeah, sure. All right, Justin, go ahead and unmute yourself. I'll pay you. Hi, nice to meet you, Philip, and hey. everybody else. And uh, thank you, Tish, for doing this. It's yeah. such an awesome opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, hi, Philip. Also, I'm coming to you from Boston, uh, Massachusetts right now. Um, my question was, um, at what stage uh, uh, of development do you like your applicants to be at when applying uh, to the Institute? Uh, for me personally, I've been uh, developing and working on an animated, uh, an animated superhero series. And um, I have a, uh, I've created uh, with my co-creator a pilot and we're working on right now on finalizing a pitch deck. And um, if I was a, 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 a as an applicant applying to the institute, um, is that uh, is that a stage where it, 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 having that uh, already like kind of developed or having those like kind of ideas created is that is that like exciting uh, uh, to you as a you know on the executive board? Yeah, you don't even need an idea. Um, <laughs> we have plenty of people in the Institute that just want to learn about the TV process and the ideas come to them as they go. We have plenty of people who show up at our doorstep with pitch decks that end, end, end up going through eight months of redevelopment. And we have plenty of people that show up with completed pilots, actually not even just completed pilots. We have people that show up with completed seasons of, of produced and fully edited series. Um, literally, we don't care whether you have an idea or not and where you're at in that process. That's it. Well, I love, I love that everything, it, um, I'm really excited because everything you just said is like what we did at the dojo here. The first rule of the dojo is to know what you want, ask for it, trust that people will give it to you if you allow. So it's that kind of internal work, both the spark of, spark of articulating what it is that you want, which is the beginning of the creation, then you create the connection to amplify those efforts and and allow and, and make make things happen. So that is totally in alignment. And just shout out to Justin. Um, he's someone who totally embodied that. Um, he came to a, a fight club with uh, Ned Lott, one of the fantastic animation uh, dir uh, directors and, and casting directors that we work with. He said, hey, I liked what I saw. I have this thing seem like you'd be cool to talk to. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. And now he's here and this is connecting. And so, you know, the, just the, the, the very essence of the word catalyst is, is happening and we can each be catalysts for every, for each other. So that's, and it, yeah, good, good, good. So, so cool. So cool. So cool. Um, How's that helpful, you, Justin? 
No, go ahead. So helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Philip, and thank you, Tish. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Tish, did you want like did you want me to just uh, is it a Caterini? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, well, let, let's see. Uh, uh, Jeffrey, uh, well, is let's see. Wait, uh, hold on a second, Jeffrey. Why don't you guide us so we get a nice balance? Uh, yeah. Um, well, I think we. I think we could take one more as long as we're kind of on the catalyst because that's where most okay. of the questions are coming from. Great, and then I'm keeping track of everybody so we can circle back around to some of the more technical and uh, voiceover specific questions. But yeah, um, Ekaterina, go ahead and uh, let us know. Thank you. And thank you, Philip and everybody for um, this opportunity. So I had a question specifically about mentorships and um, as it relates to animation. Um, Sensei Kat and I had a conversation during our one-on-one -on -one coaching <clears throat> about content creation and getting into animation. Um, right now I'm on the voiceover side, but also very interested in the creation side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are two types of, of mentorships in our universe. Uh, there's the organic mentorship, which is people who meet at our events throughout the year. Uh, we hold, we have kind of four home bases uh, here in Duluth, which is what you see on the screen behind me. By the way, you guys have never seen Lake Superior. There it is. Uh, that's, the, <laughs> that's one half of 1% small corner of Lake Superior. Uh, the I, Lake Superior is the size of all of New England minus half of Maine. That's how, that's how big of a body of water it is. Um, so we have this little inland sea here and this is our home, but we also do, events in LA, New York, and Savannah, Georgia throughout the year. In fact, we have an LA event coming up that hasn't even been announced yet. You're the first group to hear about it. Uh, four weeks exactly from tonight on March 2nd, we're going to be holding a social event in LA. Uh, and then we'll be doing New York and Savannah. And the reason I bring those up is those are the organic mentorships. So what I mean by that is you come to a Catalyst community event and the biggest problem usually with about, about making those types of partnerships is when you go to an event cold, it feels like you have no reason to walk up to somebody and say, hey, would you want to be my mentor? Right? Like that's kind of awkward in a lot of situations. Um, the thing about the Catalyst events is you don't need an icebreaker because the icebreaker is, is that you're at a Catalyst event. So you're already, everybody that's already there is already in the mindset of, oh, hey, who are you? What are you doing? How can we work together? Or you don't even talk about work at all. And it's just, hey, you want to go for a hike or you want to get a drink or and you start talking about where you're from or whatever. So use that as an icebreaker for those kinds of organic mentorships that form that we don't even know about until after you tell us happen. That's probably 75% of the mentorships that happen at Catalyst. We're still chasing down stories from all the ones that happened at the festival here in Duluth last year. Because the reason we chose Duluth was it's a remote getaway event, a place for the festival event. And it, you, we take over the whole downtown area. So pretty much everybody you run into at Catalyst is there for the same person and purpose. And it feels like you're all at summer camp, which is kind of cool. So that's the first half. The second half is where Lady Emmy over my left shoulder here comes into play. Uh, we have a paired mentorship program with the National Academy of TV Arts and Sciences. And that is for people who have gone through our institute program completely, which takes typically eight to 12 months or so. Um, and at the end of that rainbow, we get a, we've gotten a really good sense of who you are, what you're looking to do. You've made some career choices about what you wanna be focused on. And then we dig into our database of industry professionals who come to us through the TV academies mostly and say, okay, Katarina uh, wants to do this. Uh, here's the perfect mentor that she should be working with. And we ask the mentors to at least have a couple of meetings with you, but also more importantly than just having coffee, give you homework. And the reason homework's important is it keeps the conversation going and it gives you a reason and an excuse to have another touch point and have another conversation with that mentor. Um, those paired mentorships, we just announced the program at the festival in the fall, like four months ago. So we're just starting to go through pairing up the first class of people who were Institute members that started last year. So if you were to start the Institute process this year, get through the festival, your paired mentorship wouldn't happen until the end of this year, early next year. Um, but along the way, 
that those organic mentorships are really uh, we're finding the sweet spot uh, of, what, of what's going on. Does that, does that help answer the question directly? It does. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, and I have to say, none of us, none of us would be here if it weren't for mentorships that I started 30 years ago, like through the, the people that I met and people who like just went, come on, kid. Um, back when I was a kid. Um, and Ooh, and nice. the things the things that I learned from those people and you know continue to maintain the relationship became the 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 fertile soil out of which everything that has happened in my career. So yeah, um, you know one of the things we say about Fight Club is yeah it's who you know, like in the best possible way. I think sometimes when you're outside of the industry. And this is really important, uh, you know, if, if you're coming to voiceover from other realms, first of all, it's weirdo because we're all nice to each other and help each other for the most part. Um, and then, um, um, no, I'm just excited about that. And I've totally lost my track of thought. Um, <laughs> what the hell was I talking about? Anyway, um, yeah, so, so it, it all comes together out of how, how it's all, it's all relationship is, oh, I know what I was saying, that sometimes it's like a bad thing, like, oh, Hollywood, it's just who you know, it's like, yeah, so get to know awesome people, <laughs> and be, be people who people want to know, like, that's it, it's fun, it's awesome, it's good, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, Terry, I see Terry next. Uh, we already asked a question, though. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm breaking protocol. Jeffrey, you no, drive. That's okay. <laughs> that's all right. I, you are so <laughs> eager and on the ball and attentive, and yeah. I have nothing but praise for that. Um, I'm going to circle back around. Um, Justin, um, and forgive me, uh, Louis, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. You had a question about um, talent. Maybe, Philip, you can chime in from how that could be helpful from a catalyst perspective. Oh, Justin, we are you? There you are. Good morning. Hi. Yeah. So my question is, uh, I'm I'm starting out, and and I want to get to the point where I, I want to work with a coach so I can find my my marketable voice, my sellable voice, uh, figure out my you know my archetypes. But in, in doing that, I. I wanted to know whether it's better to look for a coach that's a, a working talent or someone that is in, in charge of casting talents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, go ahead, Philip. No, no, Tish, your show. No, I was, I was just going to say who, who would like to field that, Kat, uh, Sensei Kat, or Dan, or Philip. But you, you spoke first, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get others. Yeah, my, my short answer, Justin, is um, it doesn't so much matter on our end uh, when we do the pairing about whether or not the person's working talent or their casting talent, it's who are they working with and who are they casting for? And are the people that they're working with and are the people that they're casting for the people you want to be working with? That's the way I would do it, is answer the question, what do you want first? Who do you want to be working with? And then go find the people. And, and once you find the people that are attached or associated to those folks you want to be working with, it doesn't really matter if they're working talent or casting talent. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, well, Philip, you need to come work at the dojo more. Um, yeah, we it, it doesn't really matter, except that you need to find someone that you're comfortable with that's going to bring all that best stuff out of you. And that is the great thing about the dojo is we offer all of the above that we are all we're all the senseis. We've got a couple more on the line. Um, we're all working pros and you also have access. And I bragged to Philip about this. It's one of the things that we offer that a lot of schools, voiceover schools don't offer is we are so deeply connected in the industry, especially in Los Angeles, that if you want to meet particular casting directors um, or, or agents or managers or writer, director, producers, we have access to those people either through Ask the Sensei or we have these great fight clubs a few times a month where once you're trained at a level where you can be auditioning as a working pro, you can actually train with and audition for or meet with these people that are casting the video games you want to be in or the animations you want to work on or the promos for the network shows that you want a voice yeah so both thoughts dan 
Uh, yeah, it, you know, it's it's a matter of networking, like networking, like you were just saying, Tish. Uh, it's it's who you know. Who do you know that also is doing the kind of stuff you're doing, Justin? It's like talk to them. They know people. And they may know people who know people. And it's all about, you know, expanding your network and finding the people that, you know, the more people you have to work with, or as Tony Robbins would like to say, he with the most choices wins. Yeah. Uh, you want to be able to get out there and meet as many people as you can. It's like dating. You got to find who's the right person, who's the right fit for you. And that involves trying to get as many people into your network as possible so you can find those people. And I think I think piggybacking off of that, Dan, there's also benefits to knowing to knowing people, um, to knowing people who can cast you. So to work with them, understand how they work, to get to know them, so they get to know you. So when a casting opportunity comes up, you know, especially if you are specific, like we were just we were just looking for someone just said, hey, we need an older Asian man. Oh, okay. And not that you're like old. Old Asian man, but like I'm just saying that you have a certain amount of life experience. If you know, if you're in our mix, we're like, oh, I know somebody, right? So, so looking at that, and then I think the other thing that's inherent is in this: um, everyone who's beginning their voiceover journey, this is your origin story. You're living your origin story right now, and. Um, just just uh, like Philip was saying, you don't know how it's going to go. So trust that you, so you don't need to make all the choices or the exact choice. You just need to make a choice that is aligned with what you're, where you are at and what you know about yourself first. And then you make another choice and you, you won't be the last person that you coach with or the last place that you coach with. And, and then in terms of your training, there's something really powerful about getting the perspective from people who are the decision makers who hire and do that process and to learn that. And then there's something really important about training with people who know how to deliver that and what's involved with getting, getting that. You know, it, at the dojo, we work in two modalities, coaching modality, which is how do you get to there, and direction modality, which is like stand and deliver, like a session. So it's kind of a combination of both and and as Dan was saying, get to know good people who you vibe with and then keep on going. <laughs> so there's no right answer. There's only the next answer. And you can you can make a choice and go like, oh, wow, that was so the wrong answer. Right. <laughs> wow. That was that was not the right step or that 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 step took me here. Right. So, yeah. Awesome. Good. Great I'm, question. I'm only I'm only where I'm at because of more of the wrong steps I took. That that, that's that's really sure. that's actually really cool just take the steps baby yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's that's really interesting that's really I mean just as a fun story I got my first studio job over a game of pool at Barney's Beanery in West Hollywood <laughs> but the reason I was there was because I had been up working overnights at the hotel to pay the bills while I was writing my script during the day and I hadn't been sleeping in months which was a bad choice and my roommate said, you look horrible. We're going out and we're taking a break. And we went to Barney's and there were people playing pool. And he's like, if we're going to be here, you might as well be social. Uh, and he ended up being a, a decent roommate, not the greatest guy, another bad choice. Um, <laughs> I was overworked and doing too much. Bad choice number two. Had I not been doing those things, we wouldn't have been there. And had I not been drinking, bad choice number three. I probably wouldn't have had the courage to say to the person we were playing pool with, hey, I have a math degree that I'm not doing anything with. I'd love to work inside of a network. Do you know of anything? And she says, well, I happen to be leaving my job in business affairs to move over to the finance division. Why don't you apply for it? So it, like the industry is just filled with those types of stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Exciting discussion. Uh, what's next, Jeffrey? Who's next? Oh, cool. thank you. That's good question. Good starting off point. Um, so I'd like to get it. Um, so forgive me if I say it incorrectly. Rajmi, uh, go ahead and pop in and ask your question. Rush me, like don't rush me. <laughs> I'll try not to. And feel free to add, you had um, you had two questions, so feel free. Uh, I think they're both pretty related, so feel free to fire away. Yes. Uh, one one question. So I am. 
I'm not really a beginner in the in the uh, in the voiceover. I'm an, primarily a, a television and, and screen actor, but I'm not a beginner in the voiceover. But really, like two steps in, and actually, uh, uh, Dan had helped me set up my home studio a while back and all that. I have representation. Uh, I get a lot of auditions. I book very little, like the percentage is really small. So I've been, I've been meaning to get over to Tish's website and, and, and plan my life there. But then I see Catalyst as well. Uh, last year I did about three, four gigs, but then there's no way to get to, to know uh, where they are playing or, so how do you get that, get it, get your work to put in your uh, reel, A, and then B, uh, I speak fluent Hindi and Urdu and uh, the representation that I have does not really cater to or have clients that use that talent. Mm -hmm. So does Catalyst work with uh, um, other languages? I speak Punjabi and Pashto, uh, which is a Afghani uh, language. So, so those are my questions. Awesome. Um, I'll take the second one second. I know nothing about how to find your work online if one of the other sensei. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, uh, Kat, why don't you, why don't you take this? Cause you know, uh, Rashmi, you, you're saying you're just in the, you're, you're just stepping in the first steps. We've been doing this forever and this is something that's been totally on our minds right now. So uh, Kat, why don't you, why don't you take that? Well, first of all, I would say focusing, where did you say you're based? Uh, near, near Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Okay. So it has never been a better time to be a woman, to be a person of color, to be a person of a different gender, like the inclusion and representation is bigger than ever right now. So I encourage you, A, to focus on just getting work with your voice, just who you, your sincere self, you don't need to do anything with it, with your, you know, with the agents and managers in the United States. Also, I specialize in international voiceover and over half my clients are in Europe and um, I speak Spanish. So I have clients in Latin America and clients in Spain, but I work almost exclusively in my native English language because Spanish is not native to me. So I work, every country around the world needs English language versions of their stuff. So um, I can let Dan Leonard after this talk a little bit about WOVO, an organization that I was a member of that um, he's the current president of and they focus on the global and international aspect of voiceover. So um, a lot of that work you can get from connections, from meeting people, from being in databases, from um, we, I offer a course through the dojo that's a, a go guide on international voiceover. I can drop in the chat. I think that would help you find clients outside of the United States, but I, I wouldn't, wouldn't have you just focus on, you know, you can, you could probably work so much more with your accented English in the United States or your accented English internationally, but as well as like making sure that your agents around the world know the different languages you speak. So when those opportunities come up, but Dan, yeah, do you want to tell her a little bit about Wovo offers for people that work internationally? Oh, we can't hear you though, Dan. Yeah. Professional audio. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, World Voices, as our name uh, implies, is an international organization, uh, Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. And uh, we are always interested in people coming and joining us. The more we have, the more voice we actually have. Our mission is sort of twofold. One is to promote the professional nature of voiceover to the people who hire voiceover actors. Uh, and, you know, the idea that we're not a dime a dozen, you know, there are a lot of people in voiceover, but we have invested in time in learning, we've invested in training, we've invested in, you know, business acumen to be able to be freelance voice artists, uh, getting people to understand that voiceover is an entrepreneurial business, not show business. And if you want to make a living at it, you've got to succeed at it yourself before you start relying on other people to try and find work for you. Uh, the other part of it is membership benefits. We have a, uh, a searchable directory of our professional membership called voiceover.biz, where people can, uh, you know, build their profile and their, their demos are on there. And it's searchable by what's in your demos. So some people might have seven or eight demos. Some might have two, either in English or they, they're multilingual, like, like Catherine was talking about. 
Uh, and um, these are the things we do. We also have an annual conference that we're working on for next year and a number of other benefits. You can go over to worldvoices.org, world-voices.org and see all the things that we do. And I'm the current president and I'm, I'm pushing it to the next level of everybody knowing what's out there and what we offer them and what the benefit of, of joining our organization is where, you know, there's, go ahead, go ahead. Tish. Oh, and, and Dan, we were just, we were just speaking, how, how's it going, Mr. President at the beginning of the call, but Dan also mentioned that it's a volunteer organization. Um, and you know, you know what is the best way to get to know people is to help yeah. and to find how you can help and be helpful. And um, so that's a huge in, and it's not networking, it's being a part of something. So like figuring out what, what Wovo needs, what, not only what, what can I get from it, but what can I give is a really powerful, powerful um, way to approach this. Yeah, and I would like to brag that I've gotten Wovo members at least three or four jobs this winter alone, just from like, I have clients that are like, do you know anyone that speaks German? Do you know anyone with a Nigerian accent? Do you know, and I'm like, okay, I'm not sure if I do, but let me go into the Wovo database and you've got all your info in there. So I've just like, I'm helping people get their jobs in um, the dojo. I've also been doing that in Wovo. So it's a great organization. Yeah. And then I want to go, I want to go about, oh, oh, there was a, hmm? Well, no, I, I also wanted to mention that, you know, we are an international organization and I see Howard Ellison there in Devon, UK, who is a, hey. a member. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> One of my favorite people in Great Britain. So. Uh, yeah. And I just wanted to, to, to address a, a two more things. Um, one, another another outside of the box way to, to approach work because you are such a polyglot or poly, polylingual um, um, is uh, think about translation services, like like thing, people who need that uh, on their right. roster. Um, and then, oh gosh, I'm having brain farts today. Um, something, oh, oh, how you, 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 you're like, your, your specific question is, I did some work how do I get it, right? So that is also a thing. I think it's, it's, a, it's a little delicate art as Kat, I don't know what, how much of that story you wanna share Kat, but it's a little delicate art. And I think it is based in when you are doing a session, you're also building relationship with the engineer and the producer. And, and so staying in contact with those people might, I'm in my 11th year as one of the voices of Subaru and it's all been based on, I work with the same producers, they move agency, like it's, it's just, it, it is. So think of everyone that you encounter. One of the things we say at the dojo is there is no they, there's only we. So if you think about that, then get to know the engineer and ask the producer, hey, um, I would love a copy of this, it's so great. And then there's this really interesting window that you have to contact them after it's out and can be released, but before it's swept down river. And they're like, I'm sorry, what, who, where? Yeah, uh, yeah what? <clears throat> um, and then Kat, uh, do you want to go into the experience that you just had? Because you, you, you have to be careful. You have to be careful. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, and I was just dropping the iSpot TV link to this. Obviously, this is just specifically for television spots, but that's a lot of like the most prestigious thing we can get sort of. And so that's a lot of what we're looking for. It's like, how do I get these commercials I did? So on that note, I had a fantastic uh, session this sum last summer. I voiced uh, 48 political spots, most of which were for um, the Build Back Better plan. And so they were kind of a big deal. And it was 48 union spots in two Two hours, one of the biggest paychecks of my life. And I did not at the time think to like, ask, can I, you know, you're so focused on the work at hand. And I try to leave like a little post-it note. If I think I'll write on the script ahead of time, don't forget to ask, can I get contact info for who I'm going to, but it's like, well, I already knew this was through a production company that I'd been working with for 13 years. So I knew I'd just reach out to them, reached out to them after the fact and said, man, I would love to put together a political demo. And there were five different spots with 48 different names. So I'm like, I could make a political demo out of these. And they said, oh, we're not authorized by the ad agency to give those to you where we, we signed an NDA. So I talked to my one of my voiceover reps 
And she said, oh, let's just reach out directly to the ad agency then and ask if we can get it. So we did that and never heard back. And um, and she even knew some people personally there, so reached out personally, but nobody had access to them or offered them to us. So then like a month later, I got a very upset phone call from the production company um, and then a letter threatening legal action that I had somehow broken the terms of my contract with them, saying that I wouldn't attempt to work with their clients, like circumventing them or poaching their clients. Well, fortunately, I had a copy of my contract and there was nothing in there that said I couldn't reach out to the client, but it really made the note to me that there's varying degrees of paranoia in this industry of like, I've got a story, I can't let anyone see it. And then there's like, yeah, but I want to get it out to the world. So someone's paranoia came back to bite me that they were convinced I was doing something awful. And all I was trying to get was like copies of a project that I collaborated on by lending my voice. But there is a there is sort of a hierarchy in the voiceover industry where talent, strangely, is at the bottom. <laughs> and then there's like the agent and the casting director and that, you know, it's like, and so we're kind of trying to turn that inside out and upside down so that content creators, whatever your aspect of the collaboration is, we're all on the team. You know, we're not like the boss and the coach and the peon. And so anyway, I I don't really know what the end of that story is. I haven't, um, you know, heard back from the production company about hiring me again for this coming political season, but I I feel like I learned a lot and I am happy to share that story with people. So be very mindful, ask questions before you reach out to other people and see if they, you know, maybe I could have said, oh, do you mind if I reach out to the ad agency? I've gotten lots of spots from ad agencies over the past 35 years in this industry. So it never even occurred to me that that would offend someone. But now that's added to my list of like, okay, there's different opinions on how we need to handle this. So tread lightly, you know, be, be careful and find as much as you can on your own without bothering people, I guess, go on to iSpot TV with Google. You can find stuff that, you know, and if it's like e-learning or audiobook or any of that kind of thing, you should be able to just reach out to the person you handed your files over to and go, oh, could I would love to see the finished product. And would you mind if I like put it on my website to kind of showcase it? And very rarely do people mind. Sometimes they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we're at about five minutes before the, the top of the hour. Um, so want to share a couple of uh, things that we want to share with you about what's coming up next in terms of this collaboration with um, with the dojo and Catalyst. And, um, and uh, then if you want to hang out and reflect a little bit about what we've been talking about or have other questions, Jeffrey will put us into uh, different breakout rooms and uh, Philippa, Dan and Kat, if you can stay and you know, we can, we can, uh, we can answer more questions. Um, so um, in terms of launching this, this partnership uh, on the dojo side, we would like to offer everyone who's on this call, everyone who listens to it later, um, $50 off any new dojo per- purchase in the month of February. 2022. So that can apply to anything that we do. And um, Rashmi, one of the other things that I wanted to say is that the way the dojo works is we we meet you where you're at. And, and the idea is how can we help you get to where you want to go? So, so that's always a discussion. So how do you get that? Um, you can sign up for what we call a voiceover once over. Um, free 15 minute call with Jeffrey and then we can get to know each other even more and see how we can hone in and help you specifically and then Philip do you want to do you wanna, and I think uh, Jeffrey's probably putting this in the chat yeah all, all in the chat it's okay good good and then Philip do you want to share what because um, we're also encouraging that that everyone who's on the dojo and get involved with Catalyst and become part of this this uh, amazing effort too um, so, Philip, you want to share that? Um, sure. Yeah, we're going to be doing um, a, a discount, a heavy discount for all Dojo members to join the Institute for this year. Uh, and that includes your festival pass. Uh, it includes full access to the Institute, which there's there's three main pieces to it. One is our library of seminars. Uh, it covers almost everything to do about creating episodic content from any angle. So if you've thought about creating your own series and you just feel like, oh my God, this is so much, uh, where do I start and what do I do? That's what those seminars are there to, to guide you through. They're pre-recorded. There's about 40 or 50 of them in there. You can watch them at your own pace. 
Um, we, then the next thing we do is we do one-on-one -on -one meetings with you. Our team will ask you who you are, where you're from, tell us your story, how'd you end up in the episodic realm, uh, what are you looking to do? That's the beginning of us starting to percolate about who in our orbit should you be potentially meeting down the road. Um, and then at the, uh, and then that all the Institute membership also includes your, if you have one, it includes a festival submission. Uh, we accept festival submissions in any form. We, we have people that just have four page pitches. We have people that have professionally completed pitch decks. We've got people that have scripts, completed video. Uh, so that all is, is wrapped up in there uh, through this partnership for you with the, with the dojo, which I'm so excited about because we get so many animators and scripted people and documentarians come to us and say, the two things I don't know about are music and voiceover. And when Kat came to me with this idea about partnering with this group, I was like, oh, thank goodness, because now at least we have a solid answer about how to answer the voiceover part of the question. So my selfish goal is to wrap all of you into the Institute, get you on, listed on our database so that every time somebody comes to us and says, VO, 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 we just go, go to our database and search Dojo and they'll pull all of you up. Uh, and that is international. It includes a lot of the countries around the world, uh, Nigeria and, and Algeria and South America, and we're cracking into India soon too. So. And now I've got animaniacs going through my head. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Dan, how do, how do people keep in touch with you as the valuable resource that you are? Ah, well, it's easy to get a hold of me over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Uh, where I teach individually how to uh, set up your home voiceover studio or answer any technical issues you might have. If you've got uh, a you know, problem that needs troubleshooting, I do that for you. And I have a service on my website, a specimen collection cup. If you send me an MP3, follow the instructions for $25. I will analyze your audio to make sure it sounds what it's supposed to sound like, which is the acronym whistle. <laughs> better know. Excellent. Excellent. Well, and we have about 40 seconds. Look at that on time. Um, guys, thank you so much, Philip. It's just been such a pleasure to start yeah. this, this new playground. Um, and I'm looking forward to just all everyone coming together to make amazing things. Um, and I love that you're that your evil plan is to get everybody work like oh yes that's our big evil plan yeah. <laughs> as we say as we say at the dojo our plan for good is working <laughs> so um dan thanks as always for being here as a resource and anchor of simple sensibility and cat you you cat is the matrix builder cat is yes just magical at bringing people like connecting with the heart and bringing people together and recognize this in each of you each of us has this and uh, when you have when you have like what you have a question we we are here with the answers but you understand that you might have answers for somebody else and then we become catalysts for each other so um yeah man yeah uh, we're gonna do it um yeah, so looking forward to getting to talk with everyone. We do this at the first Wednesday of every month, 10, 10 a.m. PT. So um, tell your friends, tell everybody. There's all sorts of good things happening at the dojo all the time. And it's, it's good things because good people like you come to be a part of it. So, um, so that is the end of the official uh, as the sensei for February. If you got a roll, that's cool. Um, we will be sharing the replay of this. If you want to share that, check out the 21 questions, get to know a little bit more about Philip. Um, and uh, and if you want, if you have time to hang out, um, just stay here and then you'll be magically transported to a breakout room and we can, we can talk about stuff more. Happy to answer a few you know, home studio questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, thanks, everyone. I'll see you in a breakout room in just a second. Well, I mean, I work for Catalyst. So Ekaterini, if you if you guys have Catalyst questions, I may be able to answer. I have been with them for a few years, but I'm not the authority that Philip is. Um, so I jotted down um, what he shared about when you join, because I'm definitely going to join. Um, 
Right. You'll see other dojo people in there. There's already a few people who are working on their oh, show. Nice. There. Yeah. So I understood him to say, I was jotting this down quickly and I can watch the recording back, but um, it includes sort of that exploratory one-on-one -on -one meeting. So that's really where they get start to get to know you and what you're looking to do. P part of my question is, does that then, since I'm, I would really be in the beginning stages, mm -hmm. you would then say, okay, potentially like, okay, we have somebody who's content creator, let's say an animation who's a little further down the road, maybe we can pair you up together because you also do voiceover. Like, is that part of the process and purpose of that initial meeting? Yeah, that's my understanding. So for example, we have, um, we have a, a, mem a catalyst active person who is a Emmy winning animation content creator based in the Twin Cities. So mm -hmm. he's definitely someone that we have access to to like ask questions of and find out like how the stuff moves along. And then there's also not just the one on one, but like pre recorded workshops or events that you get invited to where you get to sort of learn. I think of it as sort of like film school without having to go to school. Like you learn all the industry stuff without learning you know, the hands-on stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I was also curious about the Savannah event that he mentioned. I didn't see anything on their website. So I was just going to ask him about that. Oh, um, let's see. So he mentioned the LA one in March. And did he say when the Savannah one is or? He didn't. So I was just curious. Yeah, the uh, next one is the LA one in March. So I maybe they don't even know the date dates yet. And if it's not on the um, catalyststories.org website, then yeah, it probably just hasn't been announced yet. So de definitely get on their email list and then, um, you know, right. join when you're ready. So, yeah. so where did all the other, where's like Philip and Tish and Jeffrey? Oh, there's Jeffrey, okay, okay, now. Howdy, howdy. Hey. Best, hey. best laid plans, everybody. We um, said, hey, breakout rooms, and then a lot yeah, of people I was kind of questions, fielding so. the catalyst questions, but I just thought better to hear it directly from <laughs> Philip, so. And, and we're back. And welcome back. Oh, and Tish, you're muted. Okay, let me get the setup going again. All right. Might as well unmute. There we are. Oh. Oh. Can we ask a question? Or are we doing something? Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I was on mute. Yeah. I was like, what the hell? So this this was my panel. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. Uh, uh, lip uh, reading uh, session, folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As now I've got my bearings. <laughs> got, a, got a little bit of that um home homegrown dojo touch is what we have going on right now. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking we either need to break into rooms where people want to ask like VO questions and tech questions versus catalyst questions, or we just stay in one room because everybody had like uh, catalyst questions for me. And I was like, well, Philip probably is the best. Oh, person. I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Well, Fire we'll away. Go. Yeah. Who, who else goes out there? Do, do you want to just, should we just, uh, oh, sorry. Um, I, I could just keep going down the list for what we had earlier. Well, Barbara raised her hand. I, I don't know. I don't know what happened in the other room. So let's just make some stuff up. Uh, let's go with Barbara. <laughs> Hi, Barbara. Hello. Well, I had a question, um, Philip, regarding the types of programming, because I know um, there's programming now. Some of the programming is some personal development based, like I'm thinking couple couples therapy. Are you all doing any of that type of thing? I have um, a 20 episode series of conversations about meditation in my background and the work that I've been doing is meditation focused. And I'm just curious if those are potential things in terms of uh, being able to use that from a creative standpoint, as well as being an actor and voice actor. We, the answer is yes. We, we don't care about genre or topic. We just care that it's storytelling format is episodic in nature okay yeah. do you mind clarifying episodic i'm not quite sure what you mean philip do you mean something that can be broken into episodes is that what you mean no i mean that's a great question um when you make a, a pitch deck or you give a pitch for an episodic or tv series the two things that matter the least most of the time are your characters and your plot points when you go and give a film pitch all people care about are your characters and your plot points because you have 90 minutes to tell a story. When you are doing something episodic, what, we're, we're, what we work with you on and what the people listening to your pitch care about is your story world around and in which these characters live. You need to be able to create a space that can go on indefinitely. That's uh, what we were just talking about, right? 
Yep. If you think of any episodic series, the point of the show and the pitch of the show is never about this character does this thing in this episode at this moment, because you don't know those things. As a showrunner or a TV runner, a TV creator, you're not coming in and pitching, here's what happens in episode one and here's what happens in episode three. You're saying, here's the story world in which my characters live. Give me millions of dollars to go set up a writer's room with other 12 other writers who then we're gonna work on the actual plot points. So when I say episodic, I mean story world. I mean something in structure narratively that you have that has no end, that is open-ended. Uh, as opposed to if you have an idea in your head that is meant for a film and you're like, look, this story has a very clear beginning, a very clear middle, a very clear twist, and then a very clear end, and I can wrap that up in under two hours, that's a film. And some stories are meant to be told that way. There are other stories that are meant to be told on and on and seven and, years, right? And have <laughs> and have any direction. That's narrative. Yeah. Just to show yeah. how little I understand, is this in, is this in any way like what we call a television soap, which goes on with rough, no. roughly the same structure? It's not that. Okay. No, what 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 you're hitting on here is such a core central central piece of this. The word television is such a misnomer for the storytelling arts these days. It's why we changed our name from Independent Television Festival to Catalyst Story Institute. You can't think of TV anymore as the thing that lives on your box between 30 and 60 minutes with commercials or has a story structure to it that is weekly or you have to think in terms of story think lord of think middle earth think um i don't know it doesn't have to be a big epic it could be literally the central park cafe in new york right like which was friends but it's not the people driving the story it's the world driving the story and that's the big switch now how that world develops and whether or not you end up chumping that into short form series, long form series, network TV, cable TV, wherever it gets distributed, we don't really care about where we care about that core IP nugget, which is the story world. Right. And and Thank we you. were just we were just talking in the other room about like, you know, things like the office. And then um Howard, it's interesting because in in UK story arcs are shorter we do a series then it's six or something and in in la it's like let's do 29 or something yeah. like that right <laughs> and then and you know so so the office being an example of that was like a, a a series that was like six or eight or something like that and then might get renewed right like sherlock and then but then in a, in america it it turned into 10 years right or nine right. years or whatever but right. the premise was what is it to work in an office and what does that mean as a human to work in an office and that works that that literally works internationally right because there's versions of the office that are in every in every country right my, my favorite exercise and experience from when i was working at hbo ever was when i learned what the pitch for the sopranos was and the pitch for The Sopranos had absolutely nothing to do with New Jersey or the mob. The pitch for The Sopranos was, I'm going to make the audience find the part of them that empathizes with the serial killer. That's The Sopranos. Ooh, it happens to be told through the lens of a ruthless mob boss. That is not the story engine. The mob is not the story engine that drove every scene. The story engine that drove every scene is, Ooh. I'm gonna find that part of you every week that makes you like this guy who goes out and bashes people's heads in. Well, I just got like double double goosebumps. Like yeah, double that's, the, so that's the thing. When you go to make an episodic, that's the nugget you're looking for. <sighs> I'll let that land for a moment, wow. Yeah. I think a lot of I think that answered what a lot of people had on their minds. Uh, all these original content creators in the comments. Um, that's awesome. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, Barbara Howard, uh, was that was that a, a to answer your questions? Yes, it, it it does answer my question. <laughs> and you doing that explanation was very helpful too. So thank you for that because that I awesome. had a different thought of episodic and the way you explained it is just really seals the deal. 
Well, and I thank think, you. I think mm -hmm. you know the the cool thing about Catalyst is that the 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 world of storytelling is changing, right? It's changing so much, like what 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 and how it's possible. Yeah, you know, I have to. I have to run, but Tish, I'm going to jump off that with one final point, which is the TV industry for the first 70 years of it from the 30s through the 2000s was really driven by a handful of people who had the ability to control what went on on the airwaves um, from a creative perspective. Um, that has now flipped entirely. The industry no longer drives where the episodic side of the industry is going. It is the creators who are driving it. And what I mean by that is when somebody makes a TikTok or a YouTube video or anything that is video content in any way at all, the heart of the business of the episodic industry is people's time to watch things is finite. And if you take 10 minutes of somebody's attention to watch your story, ABC can never get that 10 minutes back. There's, there's a finite resource that drives the business model of our industry and it's just one big comp, you're competing against Disney for eyeballs, right? Now that might sound scary, but the advantage is actually yours because Disney has to make billions of dollars a year to cover their, their existing expenses. You don't. <laughs> You actually have a little bit of a business advantage now where you can make stuff and distribute it and build up your own bank, if you will, of followers and people who following your story world to the point that once you build it up and it happens to become a bigger thing, yeah, maybe somebody in the network sees it great, but you don't need their blessing anymore. Storytellers are driving the industry now. The industry is not driving the storytellers anymore. I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. Mm. And drop the mic and we'll see you next time, Philip. Looking forward to everything good ahead. Thank you so much for all this time and the extra time. Thanks, and everybody. everybody. Thank you, Philip. See you in LA in a month. <laughs> see you yeah. out there. Thank you, Philip. Cool. Woo, you guys. Oh, well. <laughs> Woosh. Woosh. Okay. Um, oh. I'll yeah, see. I've got I've got a couple more minutes and we can, you know, and and you know. <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey's on the JoJo team because he hung out here for hours one time. Um, yeah, yeah that's... I'm available for like the next half hour. So if people have um, Catalyst stuff, I can answer the best I can. Otherwise, um, Dojo stuff. Uh, I know there was a, a question that several people voiced interest in that had to do with podcasting. Um, so yes. Ralph, um, uh, I think this also will kind of sum up what Terry posed as well. So I'll pin both of you. Yeah, Ralph, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, fundamentally, it's just I'm looking for some resources as I now have a little more time to learn how to put one together because I've got my own idea about what I want to do. Mm -hmm. But now it's translating that into a viable, you know, uh, presentation and, and so forth and stepping into that world. Um, so you're talking about like, I've never made a podcast before. I have an idea. How do I make the podcast as opposed to how do I get distribution and get it out in the world? Well, you could say both, both areas, of course. Okay. So, so Catalyst is absolutely, uh, absolutely the place to learn how to get your story out in the world. They don't teach people per se, how to like make an animated series or how to make a TV show or how to make, they just help you connect with other people that want to make and other people that want to distribute because it's all partnerships. I like to send people to um, maybe Jeffrey, you could find the link for um, pod people of which I am a member. It is to me the best largest database of podcasting writer, director, producers, editors, voice talent, buyer, buyers, and they actually, if they love your idea, they can actually help you produce it or they can connect you with people that can. Um, so both are valuable to you. I would say that podcasting at Catalyst has already existed there. It's already a big part of it. This idea of like bringing animation and gaming into it is sort of just that happened in my brain over the past few months, but pod, podcasting is very much a part of it. So if you want to learn, if you already have your idea and you're ready to get recording and just want to figure out how to get distribution, I really recommend you join Catalyst because they do support podcasters for sure. Okay, cool. Wow.
And and that's totally yeah. exciting. Yeah, Thank great. You. I was actually going to ask exactly that. We've talked TV, 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 and I keep frantically writing notes. Oh, TV, great, TV. Great. But actually, <laughs> voice, that's my first love. Ever since Dylan Thomas in 1954. <laughs> to begin at the beginning. I mean, Howard and I have hung out in many Wovo chill outs together. I you? know. I, I, I just, yeah. It's just where I want to be. I want but to it, find it, those it, wonderful it, scripts that are still waiting to be revived or written. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. now there's a place for it. That's exciting. Well, yeah, and Howard, I really want to encourage you, if you haven't yet got a U.S. agent, with your voice and your skill and your background, I got a load of auditions for podcast stories this week. So oh agents in the U.S. are now starting to get their actors auditions for podcasts. So you might want to, you know, consider. Gosh, Kat, that. that's exciting. Yeah. Do you know, this week, it cheers me up because this week iCloud wrecked my computer. It completely wiped the desktop, completely removed all my files, which I can't get back. And I thought, am I going to have to give myself about a six month sabbatical and start from scratch? Well, maybe, no, I don't want to do that. A, I want to keep it's going. It's the universe that, that, you, that it is time for new. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. And, and Ralph, uh, this intrigues me because we have someone on the dojo team now who specializes in podcasts. So maybe I can talk with Lissa and say, well, let's put together a, put together a podcast thing and we can make a goat worry, guide. Worry, so, worry. You know, yeah. that's That'd be awesome. Thing of awesome. Like coming awesome. to a place yes. of like, hey, I've got a question. I'm like, okay, we got answers. So fantastic. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, um, yes, yes. And Nicole, I'm so intrigued to hear your voice in the room. You've been waiting so patiently. <laughs> oh gosh, thank you. All right. I'm really excited because from the beginning of this talk, I've had so many ideas regarding, well, this one specific idea. Let me just jump in. Um, so it's about content creation, collaborating, Catalyst, Vio Dojo, all of us in our careers marketing. Um, starting my LA journey during the pandemic, social media, specifically Instagram, has been very powerful for networking relationships. Um, and one of the ways that Instagram has shifted um, really exciting. And even on LinkedIn, I've been following the talent agencies. They are looking at influencers, not saying that here we want to be influencers, but they are looking at those algorithms. And what I found very effective as an actor and what the algorithms favor are these reels. So you may have heard of like the Instagram reels. It's basically the same thing as TikTok. They're 30 on Instagram, they're 30 and 60 seconds. And there's this cool captioning feature. And so you can basically like have a little video of a flower that you took on your phone on a walk, do your voiceover, whatever content you want, put on the caption, boom, that's on your page, you tag it. And what I found also, so you have a bunch of those, you're exploring your creativity, people are hearing your voice or seeing that, and then combine that with um, the, the agents or casting directors or projects or writers um, that you like, you follow them, you like their things, you comment on their things, you interact, um, and you have like one second where they're gonna be like, who followed me? <laughs> Possibly. Mm -hmm. And they'll look at you. And if they see you have all of these things, they might like pop into one and hear your voice and be like, oh, this person actually creates something I'm interested of a value. And even if that doesn't happen, because maybe you're shooting really high, you're now also watching their daily stories. You're seeing who's in their network when they tag their friends and their stories, you start following their friends. <laughs> Eventually you'll link up with somebody. And so the way that I saw the catalyst um, could pull into that um, is I'm not a writer, I'm an interpreter. Um, and so the, the biggest setback, or it's like very scary to just like tell my stories or find the, the copy to do that. And so ways that we could all, even whether it's the VO Dojo for your own marketing um, or helping promote the catalyst stories and like 30, 60 second promos, teasers, but in a way that supports us all as creators or whatever it is, if you write a poem, like it can be anything. Um, and so that's what I was kind of like wanted to throw into the group for as VO artists, Dojo and Catalyst, like what, how do people feel about that? Because I think that's going to be a really strong way, even making it interactive. Um, it's funny, I don't really TikTok, but I'm trying because it's becoming so much more important. They're really investing the agencies in scouring that. And I sing Donka Shane from Ferris Bueller's Day Off on TikTok. And I said in the caption, like name this 80s movie that this song is from. And people actually were like, woohoo, like really got into it. So like, there's a lot of room for expressing creativity all that 
anyway, I just wanted to throw that to the collective. Well, it, wow. It's interesting. Uh, uh, one of the foundational principles of the dojo is that voiceover is communication ex and communication is an exchange of vibrational energy. So when you ask the question, what do people feel? Like uh, whatever everyone's words are, like I'm feeling what you're feeling like, ah, oh, yeah, oh. Like so, so whatever that whatever the words that go with it, that that is the exchange of vibrational energy. So that your, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Intention. Intention. Yes. Uh, exactly. A really Intention. great example of this, Nicole, is uh, if you follow Body Courage on Instagram, mm -hmm. Danielle Pinock. She during the pandemic started. She's been an actor in LA for about ten years, and like she had a guest starring role on um what's it called little uh little sherman little Shep what it's the spin-off from the bang bang the big bang theory but anyway, oh young oh, oh, young sheldon. sheldon young sheldon yeah so mm -hmm. she started doing reels throughout the pandemic and it started getting more and more attention and more and more attention and she was just like doing things that she thought was funny and now she's a series regular on ghost and everybody knows who she is and everybody wants her and it was just her being herself being her most ridiculous and just putting it out there mm -hmm. so. yeah and dave g we see your fake hand that's been so patiently raised what what would you like to share in the room dave g are you still here you're in helen keller mode right now so we can't see or hear you but we see your fake hand is dave still here dave Dave, well, we'll come back. Uh, yeah. yeah, just Dave, pipe up whenever you are oh, there back. And, uh, oh, hey. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. I'm traveling. That's why no video. You don't want to see my background. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm, cu I'm curious about Catalyst. I, I went to the website, and they apparently are connected with a an obscene amount of film festivals. It's amazing what they're connected to and the potential opportunities that are there. Specifically, um, for, for my own interest, uh, would be the documentaries and the narration side of things. Uh, it seems like uh, a thorny bush to dive into. What would be the easiest way to dive into that and make one's services known to that huge variety of people that are involved with Catalyst? So uh, where, 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 uh, I just heard thorny. Now I'm like, where, where's the thorny? I know I'm a little stumped. The question, it's, can you, can you rephrase the, reframe the question? I, I, so uh, I, I've, I'm, I'm, I do lots of different voiceover, but my interest in this uh, is more about performing documentaries and narration for these clients. But mm -hmm. there's so many there. Is there a direct avenue to reach out to them? Or is it? Uh, yeah, that... I mean, if you Go. enroll, we've got a lot of dojo members enrolling in Catalyst Story Road to create content with people. And when you lend your voice to it, you are also creating content with them. So I think that if you want to be in the database, Philip, Philip is talking about that we're just launching now. It's a database like in Minnesota, we have a thing called the production guide. And it's like anyone in any aspect of the industry is in what used to be a book. And now it's, you know, online. So there will be a guide and anyone can, you know, involved with catalyst will be in this so when people when all these clients come looking there will be a voiceover section for it all right that helps a lot so the cover charge here is to join through the dojo catalyst thing pay that cover charge and then i have access to be part of the roster to get access to this yeah i mean it's a database i hate to say roster because that's more like when you're repping people or hiring people directly but it is a database of talent whether they're writer director producer content creators voice talent will be able to be in there but um like philip was saying it's so much about relationships so you're joining to build relationships and just like reaching out to people on the list or hoping people will reach out to you isn't so much the way the magic happens with catalyst as much as you go to these events whether they're virtual in person and they do where are you based dave normally sunny florida in shorts 
and flip. Okay, so maybe right Savannah is the closest in person that we've got, but um, most of it happens virtually these days and probably moving forward. And then you would have you would have your included ticket. It's like a three or four hundred dollar ticket to the fest is included in your membership, which is only like thirty five dollars a month minus the fifty bucks that we're they're giving you today. Um, so yeah, I really just encourage people to join to build these relationships, and the magic kind of happens there. But at the very least, you will be included in this database where buyers or gate keepers will have access to you right and so I think the 35 dollar a month membership gets me on the in the door on the roster so yeah there's just a roster. database it's not yeah. a, it's not a roster it's a it's an invitation to connect there you go yeah it's an invitation to connect so i think i think that's really the key that's really the key and this is also this is also i think one of the one of the mind shifts that we can all open up in exploring things. Cause I think Dave, as, as successful voiceover working pros and, you know, clearly you got the pipes. Sounds like you got the business acumen. Da, 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 da. We approach like, okay, but it up. I'm on this roster. Da, da, da. Opportunity, opportunity. Da, 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 da. Like we work sort of in that. How can I serve? Like, well, it's, it's, like rather like how, how do you get into the mindset of what can I, what can I give and in that giving then the getting comes and it's more about less about like okay I, bu I booked this job because I met this client as opposed to I became part of this thing that was created or I I was sitting and talking about my parakeet with this person who turned out to be making a documentary and then like hey do you see what I'm saying like so so how do you how do you look at this as an opportunity to get to know people yeah. and then offer what you have to share and get involved and give? Um, it's yeah, and it's, it's, another it's a, it's a cool way to think about it. Another yeah. thing I'm um, excited about offering to voice talent through the uh, through Catalyst is that so I produce the table reads every year up there at the festival. Now, part of what spurred this movement forward of the merging the collaboration of these two amazing businesses companies is that we had 36 um table reads. I think we had 37, you know, people in that went through the whole program of Catalyst and their project got accepted into the festival and 36 out of 37 of them came to Duluth, Minnesota during pandemic to, you know, meet other people. And there was one um, animated series out of those 37. I was like, why don't we have more animated series? And so a lot of dojo people are already planning because they're joining Catalyst, they're going to come to the festival. And I can almost guarantee that like anyone who comes to Duluth um, as a member of the dojo and or Catalyst that I will get you into my, are you a union member per chance? I am non-union. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I am able, because they, the, the table reads are sponsored by SAG-AFTRA, so I guess I, I don't know that I can guarantee roles to non-union people because we have to give them to the union people first, but if you showed up as a voice talent and there's no union person like you to fill those roles, then, you know, that is another thing, another way that uh, we introduced people to people that are already creating content. And we had a lot of magic happen last year. And I've got several, I was mostly just producing it, but I did end up performing in a lot. And I have been a working actress for 35 years. And I had several content creators, like when it comes time to casting, you're the person I want for the role. And I didn't even see it as an audition or an opportunity to get work, but now I'm being seriously considered for series, not just animated, but like on-camera series that are being produced in like New York and LA because of these relationships I've built at the magic of the festival of catalyst that's fantastic thank you so much tish and kat oh, yes. that's really great oh, explanation sure. thank you yeah thank you, and i think i think also dave like i think there's like certain certain like mm, portals to voiceover that like people's heart connect to one is being a disney princess two is narrating documentaries <laughs> like, like it's it's a real draw so so i'd say trust that calling and then how do you use this as an opportunity to be like um, who's make who's telling these stories and how can my voice it's it's a really cool and your voice is perfect for it too so yeah um, thank you Kat I'll send you a message on from your website and we can talk more yeah okay. come play at Flight Club Dave we'd love to we, we'd love yeah to we'd you. love to have you got yeah. some great ones this month cool. all right um so let's see Lisa should we have Lisa unmute yeah. hi guys 
Um, I was curious about the process with Catalyst. Uh, so let's say you develop a pilot, um, just the regular um, on camera, on -camera, camera live, live person <laughs> pilot. Do, so they help you uh, get in the right, pe get in touch with the right people, and I know you mentioned the mentorship program to help you develop it. And then it sounds like you submit it to the festival, and then if you get in, then you get to have the table read and all that. And then um, from there, do they uh, help you to get in front of people to pitch, like in front of the networks that you're targeting to pitch yep. it, or is that just all part of the festival? That's all part of. They're all there. The just in general. Like have you been to film festivals? Uh uh. Okay. So it's similar. It's there's a lot of screening. So you were talking about having a pilot already produced. So that wouldn't even be a pitch. That I mean, that would be like, yeah, we already have this pilot. So there are pitch meetings. There are well, yeah, it would be like uh because I have a pilot that I've been working on with my manager. Okay. And so um I don't know, this just seems like a great way to take it to the next level. Yeah, I wouldn't personally know how to do it without Catalyst if I were going to, I'm not currently working on anything that I'm like heading. I'm kind of satellite parts of other people's projects. Um, and it sounds like a lot of people are more interested in that, but the more you get into it, you might realize like you might be a writer, director, producer, or all of the above and not really know it until you start getting your stories out there. Cause we all have fascinating stories to share. So yeah, it sounds like you are a prime candidate for just getting into catalyst and, uh, you know, having them sort of hold your hand or shake up the, the catalyst to help you move your project in the right direction. And it's just such a small investment, you know, for what they're offering. And it sounds, it sounds like to me, like, you know, one of the things that we do at the dojo, our program is called From Mystery to Mastery. I think a lot of times it's just so daunting, like what and how and who? Huh? Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's a real demystifying process. Like, well, it's mostly just people who have stories from the heart. Yep. And then how do we tell those stories? And then how do we trust ourselves to be the gatekeepers? Like trust or take to trust ourselves to take the responsibility to bring this to the world. And then here's, here's a bunch of ways how. Yeah, one thing I've been really trying to debunk or thwart uh, that's been coming up a lot in the dojo is this idea, well, people outside of the dojo that come to us and go, how do I break in to voiceover? And it's the same with like, I have a story idea. How do I break into the industry? There's no breaking in. <laughs> There's just like doing the work, meeting people, getting involved. You know, you work your way in just like any other profession. It can see from the outside, it can seem magical and like oh that person just got an academy award and they just broke into the industry out of nowhere and it's like no they didn't they've been hustling for 30 40 <laughs> years to get there same with voiceover there's no one magical formula and so there's no breaking in it's just like you study you do the work you meet the people and the, the magic happens osmosis, osmosis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's a really interesting that's a really interesting way to look at it it's osmosis Right? Yeah, and, and like on a cellular level, it's just it's there for you to absorb, absorb and for it to absorb yeah. you. Oh, I love and that. And Katrini idea. already joined Catalyst in the minutes that we've been <laughs> on this call. So talk about you know forward momentum. Yeah. Um, I got a rule pretty soon, but um, Alina and Alton, I think you might have come on after the after the main part of the Q and A. But um, hi, glad to have you here, and and we'll be sharing the replay of the of the whole enchilada. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah. Where are you calling from, Alton? I am in Salem, Oregon. Ooh, lovely. Ooh. Pretty. Pretty. <laughs> it is cold today in Salem. <laughs> Excellent. And you're a BO talent? Uh, yes. And I apologize for coming on late. I actually was doing a coaching session. So it just finished up and then I jumped back to this. Oh, good. You're on the road. You're osmosing. So that's yeah. not a word. That's not a word. <laughs> and, and Alina, where are you from? Where, where are you calling from? Are you, and I can't tell if it's your, your thing is gray and then gray. you're going to pop in. Uh, and very Connecticut, she says. Oh, Connecticut. Cool, cool, cool. Excellent. Yay. Well, I got a roll, guys, um, but this has been fantastic, and it's so great to meet all of you and have you here. Um, we do this every month, and um, no matter where you are in your voiceover journey, um, talk, talk to us more and see what, what we can collaborate and how we can be a catalyst to what you would like to do. Um, always something good. So thanks, Jeffrey. Thanks, Kat. Nice to see everybody. Have a good um Good all Pretty goodness. Good. Thank Yay. you, Tish. Thanks, guys. Bye.